Hi, I'm Sherry and welcome back to my channel, Sherry Jones Designs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I am going to make a boho scarf. Now this is part of a challenge that's on my Discord. So, and we didn't finish it last month, so we rolled it over. And so this is what I'm going to be doing for that challenge. So I'm laying out my project and I'm choosing my colors right now and I want to show you how I do that. I'm going to be doing a patchwork like this and for fall colors and I keep my scraps in these tubs, these little tubs and I keep them by color. So like oranges or brown, you know, or, and then I've got browns here and sometimes I get more than one, I'll have several orange uh, colors and whatever. But I like to lay out my pieces that I'm going to use right next to my sewing machine and I'll show you that setup that I use when I go to sew. And then I'll show you uh, the technique, which I have another video on. This is going to be my finished edge patchwork and I will give you the dimensions of the piece of fabric that I'm going to make. I'll put them on the screen and basically I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish the project of this scarf. Now, if you're making, you know, you can make this scarf for any season. You can make it using sweaters if you want a warmer piece. You could make it using very, very lightweight fabrics for, for more, uh, one that would, you know, kind of float. And So you can make them for the seasons. I even thought about making it a little bit wider and making it more like a shawl that could that you could use as a scarf but also drop over your sh shoulders as a shawl. Um, so think of the possibilities when you start to make, uh, you know, if you decide to make a scarf like this, you know, the, the different variants of what you could make. Also, you know, you may prefer yours a different size than the one that I make, you know, that is also an option. You think about when you go to a store and you're looking at scarves, there's skinny narrow ones, there's really wide ones, there's different lengths. There's ones that are continuous that you, you know, wrap over you, then you wrap them again. So, you know, when you're just making your design, think about what you, uh, because you're the designer. In upcycling, the reason I really enjoy upcycling is that you can use your imagination, see it in your mind, and then create it, and it's not somebody else's pattern, it's not, you know, what you had to buy. I love upcycling is that it's part treasure hunting, finding the pieces, going to your thrift stores, garage sales, your closet, wherever, and looking at clothing more like you would look at a fabric store looking at the the quality of the fabric the type of the fabric the color of the fabric yes it might be a shirt yes it might be a duvet but you're looking at the fabric you're in a fabric store when you go to the thrift store think of it uh, as a fabric store another thing you may have not considered is that you can use patterns let's say you have a pattern you really like and you want to make a specific type of shirt you can go get or make your fabric and then use your patterns on that fabric so that also gives you that option there are a lot of patterns out there you know simple easy patterns it doesn't have to be something complicated and you can just use think of the clothing that you upcycle that, that you get you know you can put it together and come up with your own pieces of fabric and that is just a lot of fun so I want to show you my setup here. Um, I always like to have a, an overhead lamp right pointed at the needle. I've tried different kinds of little lamps and, and just having something right there eases my eye strain, makes this project so much more pleasant to do. And then I always, if I'm going to do a, a kind of a fairly like intricate or bigger project, I clean my sewing room first. It just inspires me. I feel like I can get messy again, you know, get it messy, but it just inspires me to have a clean room. Here's how I, lo how I like to do it. I like to line my bins up behind me and uh, and that way I can turn around and pick a color I can just turn right back around so this might be a folding table maybe you've got it to the side of you here just something so you can 
you know, look at your pieces you have and then go back to the patchwork that you're doing. It makes it so much more fun. If you can kind of see some of the pieces, it gives you an idea of, you know, of what you have available to your of your resources. And then when piecing, I will link the video down below about, I've got two of them. One's raw edge, one is the finished edge patchwork that I do. And I want to remind you that to always alternate your light, dark. If you put a dark piece down, put a light piece down, then put a dark piece down, and it'll make it just all kind of pop. And uh, that's the way I do it anyways. You know, maybe you're doing all pastels and they're all similar colors. So, But generally, I kind of go light, dark. If I do a brown, I might do a yellow next, you know, and I just kind of go by the shade of it. So let's get to doing a little bit of patchwork and... Then uh, we'll move along and I'll show you how to put the uh, scarf together. Okay, so here I've got a fairly dark. I've got some brights over here. So I'm probably, like, I think I might add an orange. Now the first thing I'm going to say is I've got an orange up here. So I don't really want an, the same exact orange. But I did like the idea of having something with orange in it next. So, you know, maybe I'll do this one and then I want to you know how much do I want what it does your is your patchwork bigger pieces medium sized pieces it does look weird to have like one really big piece and then all little pieces so at least in my eye so I, I take let's say I want to use this piece and I'll just remove part of it I don't uh, fuss over unless it's really bad I don't fuss over ironing I'll just cut myself a piece of this one. I try to be mindful to not leave a piece that is unusable. And I always make sure I try, I just eyeball it, but try to make sure they're squares and rectangles. I don't use any other shape. And then this is a finished edge, so I'm going to roll my edge here. I'm going to roll my edge here. And I'm going to start right in this corner. And I'm going to overlap, and, and this is what you'll see in the other video, is I don't just go edge to edge, I overlap. So this is the only way you can do this type of piecework. I've had other people say, oh, you can just sew it and then flip it over, and you can't because then your top edge doesn't have a corner. So it's not the same, you'll be making a patchwork, but it's not the same kind of patchwork that I'm making. Patchwork working of any kind is time consuming. Alrighty, so now I've got an orange. I might want to do, these are both kind of a little bit dark, so maybe we want to do something with Something kind of bright and lighter. And I love this sunflower stuff, so maybe we'll throw a piece of it in there. I do have some of it here, but I really don't mind because I got some right up there as well. So I really don't mind seeing it again. And these are just fabric scraps, clothing scraps, you know, a variety of just just leftover pieces that I'm using here and I can start here if I want I could go in a little bit if I want so if I want to go in here I'll show you how I would do this I can actually estimate in where it would be fold it across to where I want it slow down Turn it, and I didn't have to pick my needle up that way. Make sure I'm going straight, then turn and go down. And the, and a big table is nice because you can make sure everything is laying flat. You don't have warps, too many warps or crinkles. It will do that a little bit just because you're using different weights of fabric, you know, and some of yours may not be perfectly straight but that's to me what adds the charm to the piece in the big you know.
Okay, and now I'm going to do my side piece down here. And I'm just building me a piece of fabric. You could do this even with denim and just leave all denim edges. It'd be so cute. I don't think I'd want a denim scarf though. I would definitely use it for something else. You do get a lot of strings from this. If you had a machine that cut its own strings, it'd be nice. Now, when you have, and the other video will show this as well, if I have too much overlapping, I do trim that out. It just helps it lay it flatter on the other side. And if they're big enough, you can always use them again. So it's not a waste. And I will keep building this out, and I'll show you when I get my fabric made, um, what the next step is. Okay, so I finished my fabric piece. Now, the width of this should be whatever you are, whatever your uh, size that you're looking for is. Basically, a scarf can be anything from this wide to however wide. Like it could honestly be this wide. And, and this could be sort of a shoulder shawl with, with a backing on it. But because with my piecing, my backing isn't very pretty, and it's also bulky, I'm going to go with a 30 inch wide and a 70 or 74, somewhere in there, inch long. That's what I'm going to go with. And I'm going to be, mine will be put together like this. I'm going to put a ruffle on the ends. Um, I want to show you several different techniques that you could use. Like, I think you could take a fabric that's got maybe a flannel or something like that. Maybe this isn't a good uh, example here, but like if you could find fabric that is quite pretty on both sides. That has two sides that looks nice, like this flannel. You could actually do one layer and just do the raw seam like where you're putting one over another like this one's it's quite pretty on this side and if you do bigger chunks your scarf is going to go together faster than mine mine took quite a while to put together so let's say i would just do you could do um colors just strips or pieces and uh, you could do a french seam whatever seam you're happy with you know, to put your pieces together. I think it would be really cute, just the raw edge and just do, you could do strips all the way down. You could do um, squares that meet. You could do a lining on the back, like I could have this one. So you could just use a piece of fabric uh, here on the back of it to line it, a sheet. Let's say you're at a garage sale and you find a sheet, you could use that. But for mine, I'm gonna put right sides together. And I'm actually going to sew, I think sew my lace on last. I'm going to be using, I have a roll of this. Now you could use an upcycled piece of lace. Um, I could put it in there and then fold it out. But I think I'm just going to, in case I don't want it, I'm going to put it on last. Because I like to, to build things as I go and see what I like the looks of. And to put this together, what I'm going to do is make sure it's laying flat. You know that I don't have any waving going on and I'm gonna sew it like almost like you would a pillowcase I'm gonna sew down and I'm gonna sew and I'm gonna leave myself a gap here in the middle to turn it inside out and then I will be top stitching my edges and then I'm um, adding some lace on after the fact on one end that's how I'm going to do it I might even pin it in a few locations so it doesn't shift on me when I go to sew it so make sure when I sew it down I've got a nice a nice edge to sew on and let me use my serger even and I'm just going to do a straight stitch 
give myself plenty of room. And it's not gonna be that particular. Like if it's, as long as you don't have a gaping hole. It's really kind of like a really long pillow, isn't it? Did I get all my pins out? That's the thing. I guess I'll find out if I didn't, huh? Let's flip our other corners. I did forget to do that. We do kind of want some neat corners. finger press it as I go and just look at it. I'm going to start it and I want to see a zigzag on the top because this is all zigzag here. So that's what I want to see. Unfortunately I'm out of thread. I'm going to try to make that seem as neat as I can but it's okay. Part of boho is just some Handmade look that's really good and scrappy. Keeping my seam as tight and flat as I can. press it, make sure everything's laying flat. Making sure that the seam isn't, you know, I don't want it to be hidden back in there like that. I want to make sure that it's right out on the edge. I get it out there and then I just smooth it flat. And now I'm coming to my hole and you'll notice if you just tuck it in, tuck everything in, you can see that it's not hard to close that gap like that. If you need to, you can pin that. Like I could just take and to make sure it doesn't slip around, you can just stick a pin in it or two to make sure it's sandwiched like you want and that'll keep it from slipping open or you know giving uh making it you know because it will sometimes want to slide on you ways I can see like a person could have done bunched your corners a little bit and done tassels that would have been really cute too so and because both sides of this is pretty it really doesn't matter whether I put this up or down per se there is a right and a wrong side to lace but it's pretty on either side I'm good like this is what would be the wrong side of it so um it doesn't really matter. I'm trying to think how I want to. I'm just going to cut me a couple pieces here. That I know is long enough. This would be a great way to use up, you know, the little end pieces of lace that you get. I have bought this uh, bought lace uh, from a state sales on eBay by the lot. Now would be a good use for that as well. I'm just going to fold it under because it does have a raw edge there. I'm just going to fold it under and start it. I'm going to use 
the same stitch I was using underneath here, so it looks the same with the zigzag. little piece. I'll be able to make something even out of that. A little fabric pen of some kind, something, something for a journal. And then for these ends, if you don't want to see it, you can change your thread out. I'm not going to worry about it. I've got zigzag everywhere else. I'm just going to go right down it. So we are basically done. We're going to do some... This, I'll take some pictures of it. We'll take a look at it. This would make even a beautiful... You could do like this and make a beautiful table runner. With the same kind of design. Basically, here's what it looks like. It's really pretty. Like, it's beautiful. Like, I don't wear a lot of shawls or whatever, but it is, it is quite lovely. It's heavy, too. Like, a person could almost use it over your head like that. I mean, I like it. It's really pretty. Beautiful fall color. Would look great with jeans and boots. Fall festival or something. That would be really pretty. So I'll put, I'll put it on my um, mannequin too. And we'll do some pictures of it. And include that. So guys, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget there is a link in the description for a free Discord. If you have something you've made that you want to share. And I would love to see it. And anyways, and until next time, happy sewing.